I have a question. My name is uh, Lyubut Alamanov and I am from the Center for Analysis and uh, Crisis uh, Communications. In the spring we made a small campaign uh, against uh, trolls and fake uh, accounts and so on. And um, we turned uh, to several media uh, with the idea stop for one day all the comments below your uh, posts in uh, your Facebook pages. So just to see how the trolls are going to be silenced and then uh, to hear our thoughts and so on. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, a lot of media responded to this. Uh, they stopped uh, the comments and so on. And when we asked them, why are you not blocking uh, the fake accounts, the trolls and so on, mm -hmm. almost all media said that if they do this, the algor algorithm is downgrading their posts. So the algorithm is punishing them for moderating insults, abuses, uh, death threats and so on. And this is not only one media, I'm talking about uh, the three big uh, TV stations in uh, Bulgaria, several more TV stations, a lot of online media, uh, probably 60% of the media presence in Bulgaria. We got almost one and the same answers. If we block uh, if we moderate very hard uh, these trolls, then we are being downgraded uh, in showing our posts and so on. Yeah, and same goes if you turn off the comments altogether. You, you forego a lot of reach and a lot of attention just by the fact that you don't let people fight under your post. So uh, I don't want to comment on this specific case because uh, I, I, I don't know it, but I want to make it super clear uh, that to no extent it is in our intention uh, to like you know spread or um, or have algorithms that would uh, make negative content higher in the news feed and more it's like and it, it really if you think about it it goes really against our business model I mean at the end of the day our business model is for people to pay uh, ads to be present on the platform and I can tell you that when we talk about our main clients they do not want to be next to misinformation disinformation or negative content they do not want it so this kind of uh, narrative or myth saying that it is in our interest it is to have all these kind of negative content on the platform I is just not true and again <laughs> it's common sense that it's against our kind of business uh, goals and objectives and um, Dimi wants to add something to that uh, would you please uh, introduce yourself? <laughs> so, hi, I'm Dimi from Wikimedia, um, the organization behind Wikipedia and its sister project. Um, so, I understand that, well, your business model and your algorithms are built in a way that they promote reactions. So, the more likely people are to react to something, the more likely it is to be visible to many more people. And um, this is exactly what disinformation campaigns basically work off. Um, and yes, misinformation is a very human t thing. Uh, we are more likely to react to extraordinary, unbelievable stories. This you can do anything about. But disinformation campaigns are quite organized. They happen along a specific pattern. Um, in, in Bulgaria, for instance, what I'm seeing a lot is that usually China Radio International and some Russian outlet publish some story about how poor people are in the US and how they can't afford heating. Uh, then we see very similar articles, but a bit more exaggerated, um, appearing on basically dozens and hundreds of mushroom sites that then disappear. And then many, many accounts start sharing them. And I am really very, very pro-European. So, you know, there is no reason, normal reason for the Facebook's algorithm and Facebook's business model to promote these things. To me, I see them all the freaking time on my, on, my, on, my, um, on my feed. So my question here is, because you said you're super transparent, um, I think for algorithms and for machine learning systems, they're not at the level that they can recognize such patterns yet. But for humans, it is incredibly easy, especially in a small community and a small language like Bulgaria, to recognize these patterns and take action. 
you have a Bulgarian content moderation team, I assume. Mm -hmm. Within this team, is there a specific task force currently that is working on Russian disinformation? Are right. there people who are really focused only on Russian disinformation to take quick action? Thank you. So, as I said, we do have a team that is working on disinformation, on CIBs, and this is really a, a team of like the best experts in the world. This is not a team that is working specifically on Bulgaria, but if you go on their reports, you can see that quite some of the networks that they remove are to some extent Russia related. Again, uh, it's, it's all shown in the reports. So obviously, uh, everything that comes from the country that you mentioned is also on our radar. It's not the only source of this information, but it is. Now, that being said about what, you, wh what you're talking about, I guess the reason why we're here today is to some extent for me to maybe discuss with you and better explain how we operate, but it kind of goes both ways. Uh, and it is really important for us, and we have our public policy manager for Bulgaria here, that um, if there are like huge things that we don't see, uh, well, we'd be delighted to enter into some sort of, you know, contact. Uh, and then it's our duty to go to the CIB team and say, guys, maybe here in Bulgaria, uh, despite the fact that you guys are great, maybe here in Bulgaria there's something you didn't see. Up to you to assess. So it, it really kind of goes both ways, and that's also why we're having this discussion. Hi. No, no. Uh, just to introduce yourself, please. Thank you. Uh, my name is Neno Nenov and I work as a policy uh, advisor to a member of the European Parliament, Eva Maidel. And we had a nice event with uh, Meta and Google representatives with in Johannes. June on the same yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. on the same topic. So first, it's very it's uh, admirable that uh, Meta is uh, so so often on ground in Bulgaria. I hope that this tradition increases because this uh, helps uh, to the transparency and trust much more than your community standards. Uh, but this is really admirable practice and, uh, and it's something uh, to be appreciated. Uh, just a topic, I had two questions, but one of them was already touched upon. First was the official contact with governments, authorities. Because from my personal experience from the European Parliament, Meta is very good at contacting and engaging with uh, policymakers in Brussels who are dealing with uh, regulation like the DMA, DSA, AI Act, etc. Many of these our team and my boss is working on. So you're very good at this. Probably not so good uh, in getting in touch with authorities. I speak here only knowing the Bulgarian cases, several governments, I'm not only talking about one single individual case and ministries actually, because there are several ministers, ministries who are interested uh, in uh, getting in touch uh, with, uh, with the platforms, not just the uh, for instance, the Ministry of Defense is some that I'm not sure that platforms have thought about so often. So just something like an advice, uh, get your streams of contacts which you mentioned that you have, and I believe you have, uh, much more efficient at least with countries like Bulgaria. It's in mutual uh, interest. This is uh, just a slight comment. And a specific question more on the specific topic of the today's event, the content moderation in Bulgaria. As you mentioned, you've been working with uh, Agence Fresh, uh, uh, Agence France Press, yes. Uh, and uh, okay, it's one content moderation. Uh, let's assume that before fact check, Begay got their um, verification by the IFCN, there has been none other verified fact checkers in Bulgaria. I don't case. know. I don't know. I just assume. I really don't know, but yeah. this is the only logical reason that I can think of that you work with only one yeah. uh, institution. So if there is there was only one, then uh, have you made any efforts to increase at least their capacity of the people, resources who are engaged in uh, helping Meta because they have their other uh, businesses, of course, uh, like a media outlet. Because, uh, okay, political instability is something that Meta shouldn't care. You're not like a political organization, but in countries which are very close to the war zone, uh, in countries who are uh, in a constant political instability and uh, like disinformation is flourishing, probably a little bit more 
resources and capacity, increased capacity during specific times, for instance, like the current election campaign, and this has been taking place every three months in Bulgaria for the past two years, probably will take place uh, several other times in future, in soon uh, time. So is there any mechanisms that during, for instance, election campaigns or turmoils or social, let's say, turmoil, something like this, Meta is increasing their capacities and resources in moderating or monitoring this information, probably temporary. And a very last question uh, about how you select your uh, content uh, moderation partners. Do you proactively place something like, I don't know, an adverb or a call for verified fact-checking organizations or you wait for organizations, for instance, like Fact Check BG, they get verified and they get in contact with you asking you if you can work together. Because, you know, only one partner can be very biased. I'm not saying that this is the case in Bulgaria, but one partner is usually risky. Thank you very much and sorry for the long intervention. Thank you for the questions. <laughs> there was a lot of questions. Yeah. <laughs> so if I, if I miss... I, I tried. If I miss some, uh, pl please come back to me. So first of all, thank you for the warm words. And it's indeed important for us to be um, as much as possible present on the ground to discuss with, with, the, with the local stakeholders and, co and communities. With regards to engaging with the local administration, uh, well, I guess it's not a secret that we will have now a meeting with our, uh, with your uh, at interim minister of uh, of, uh, of digital affairs, um, and um, and yeah, I mean this is something that uh, that we try to do, that we try to do more and more. We do now have for a few months now a public policy manager that is working specifically on Bulgaria. I mean among uh, a few other countries, but that is working specifically on Bulgaria, and. Uh, and if you do see administrations that want to meet with us, uh, Whitney is over there, uh, and I think it's really the best contact point for uh, contacts with uh, with administrations. Now, with regards to um, capacity in kind of stress times, I would say, or stress test times. Uh, first of all, with regards to the to the war in uh, in Ukraine, um, the first important thing to say is that we have increased the capacity of our fact-checking uh, programs in Russia and in Ukraine in the whole region since the war started. Um, and this is something that I guess we, we will continue uh, be doing. Um, and also in the whole region, whereas we had like 16 fact-checkers one year ago, today we have over 20 already. And I do expect and I do hope that this uh, amount of fact checkers will indeed increase with new organization uh, having the, um, uh, the, the, the right um, kind of documents to, to, to be onboarded. I do think, expect, hope that next year there will be more of these. So again, this is a path and the figures show that we are having more and more uh, of these. Now with regards to the elections, of course that elections are like fully mapped and we have in the kind of back office what we call what we call XFN teams. So it's really teams of different kind of sub teams. You have legal, you have people like me, you have people working on misinformation, disinformation, content, whatever, and they really focus uh, on um, on everything that they should focus on for the elections in Bulgaria uh, to be like clear on our platform and to ensure the transparency of the elections. Uh, and you know, more broadly speaking, we have nowadays I think 40,000 people working on safety and and trust with Meta, which is like, f I think, four times more than in 16. Uh, only last year we've invested five billion dollars on safety uh, and trust on our platform. So uh, again, are we perfect? No, we're not. Uh, are we an industry leader? Well, I think we are. Uh, I think we are, and I think that our efforts are uh, really clear. Um, again, uh, more can be done, yeah, but really the efforts are here. Uh, but coming back to, 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 the, uh, to the elections, uh, yes, we do have specific teams working on the elections. Uh, yes, we are in contact with authorities to uh, allow for the elections to be, again, clear on our platform. Uh, and yes, we're open to partnership with NGOs. Uh, again, I think like, you know, fact, uh, not fact checking, but uh, uh, media literacy campaigns in the context of the elections is also something that is extremely important. And that would maybe be interesting to do. 
Um, in fact, I will jump in here just for a second and uh, go back to you with your questions because this was um, uh, meant to be like a wrap up of to our discussion here. It was about especially evolving, evolving concept of media literacy and how you see what knowledge, understanding and skills are required um, are needed for users to better comprehend how content moderation works and to create these ethics in users to read community standards, to understand them better, to be more responsible. Uh, so the knowledge, the understanding, the skills, what they are in your opinion, and they are in fact media literacy in Bulgaria is part of the civic education. Um, and how meta could be part of this, um, uh, creating resources, incentives for different organizations to train teachers, to train people young and elderly on that? I think that working at scale is really the main answer here because the resources, they do more or less exist. We can fine tune them, we can make them a bit more local, but the resource, they exist. Mm -hmm. the, the question is how really to uh, reach to the different kind of audience because mm -hmm. uh, reaching, being able to efficiently reach the teachers is not the same thing than efficiently reach the kids and teenagers, which is not the same thing than efficiently reach the parents, which is not the same thing to efficiently reach the voters, right? And okay. so these kind of strategies, um, it is something that is to be implemented with local stakeholders, because honestly, I do not have the knowledge about how to reach parents in Sofia. I, 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 I don't know. And hence, partnership is, is extremely important. Um, and then when we talk about elections and stuff like that, then it's really scaling uh, and doing things in partnership with other media that I believe may be the most kind of efficient here. Uh, thank you for that. And probably some of you would like to add, yeah? Uh, Dr. Galef. Uh. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Dr. Galef. Uh, I'm representing Center for the Study of Democracy, a think tank here based in uh, Sofia, working on uh, uh, disinformation and Russian influence in Europe since more than 15 years. Uh, so uh, there are two major issues, let's say, here with the content moderation base, uh, uh, in Bulgaria. One is what uh, already Nicola mentioned. Uh, it is about the algorithms, how they promote uh, 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 and are used by inauthentic uh, coordinated behavior or groups that are using the algorithms uh, in their benefit. And this is, let's say, a technical question. Uh, but uh, the other question is about the content moderation that is done uh, by persons, that, by individuals. Uh, and I'm not talking about fact checkers. I'm talking about the um, company which is uh, subcontracted here in Bulgaria uh, from Meta uh, to do the content moderation. And very often there are worries and concerns that actually this content moderation, and we are not sure, we are not sure whether uh, uh, a post or account is blocked or uh, taken down by the algorithm or by a decision of a person from these content moderators based here in Bulgaria. But there are a lot of, uh, in last, I would say, uh, year, uh, there are a lot of uh, worries and concerns and uh, a public debate about uh, how this uh, um, how this company has been selected, how you enforce your own community standards on the work of this company, whether is it possible that, uh, let's, say, uh, the, uh, let's say, the personal biases of content moderators, of the persons that are doing uh, uh, the content moderation, uh, uh, influence the uh, work of these persons. And uh, the, the biggest problem is that for this issue, there is nothing as a reliable information, let's say. There are only rumors. And uh, even some, uh, some uh, efforts of different organizations and persons to understand 
whether uh, whether uh, the activities taken against their posts or uh, their accounts have been a result of just a technical algorithm or have been a result of decision of a, a, a given person, uh, are, 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 uh, not fruitful, so uh, di didn't have any results. Uh, and and just to uh, to finish with uh, uh, an example, uh, we are well known for uh, distributing a lot of information about Russian influence in Europe, and I can't imagine why several of our uh, our posts that have been um, uh, boosted uh, have. Even we do have the disclaimer for um, mm -hmm. uh, political issues, social issues, and so on and so on, and everything verified and so on and so on, uh, have been not approved, while at the same time, uh, posts of pro-Russian groups here in Bulgaria and some parties in, in this uh, including, uh, that are literally telling lies like, for example, that just now uh, Russia uh, army is uh, um, uh, actually advancing in Kherson Oblast, uh, which is just factually not true, have been uh, uh, allowed and approved for being boosted uh, at the same time. So uh, I personally think this is not algorithmic. Uh, this is not result of uh, algorithms. This is a result of uh, uh, decision of uh, uh, persons that have been moderating the content. So, what is the what are the measures that you taken to uh, enforce uh, transparency and uh, so on, and also accountability of these companies that are actually doing the content moderation? Right. Thank you. Thank you very much for this question. Uh, well, as you can imagine, we've heard about these rumors. Um, a, a few things. Uh, and, and here I really want to be super clear. Uh, first of all, uh, when our content moderators have our policies, they are extremely, extremely specific, and there is no room for uh, interpretation for them. They are written in a way that really they should follow, they, 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 they ought to follow what is written and again interpretation zero ground. That's one thing. Second thing, every single content moderator that we have is not only onboarded and trained when joining uh, the teams that moderate content, but they have very regular trainings for us to be sure that they do follow our guidelines and that they do follow uh, the way we do operate. Then within the companies, the different teams are weekly audited, weekly audited on the quality of their work, on, you know, randomly chosen and stuff. Then the last thing is that also the content moderator as such, the task that is assigned to him is also randomly kind of assigned, which, is, which makes it not possible for them to really go and deep dive at scale, uh, moderate content in a, in a biased way. So on the one hand, I really, really want to emphasize that we do have all the tools in place uh, that allow us to be safe and confident about the quality of the content. Uh, that being said, the remark that you make indeed is interesting because it's been quite some months is that there is this rumor in Bulgaria and maybe we should think about you know how to better communicate to further rumor on that I agree that being said on the fact checking really checks uh, on the fact checking sorry on the content moderations checks are being done internally uh, it is really our duty to be sure that the level of quality of moderation all around the world is the same and on that we feel confident Uh, take the word. Okay. Um, yeah, my name is Ilian um, uh, Vasiliev. I um, used to be ambassador of Bulgaria to Russia, and then I'm running a, a, uh, an alternative uh, an analysis uh, NGO foundation, uh, fully dedicated to um, 
telling Bulgarians uh, uh, the intricacies of Russian policies. And I'm also a producer of Alternativa to TV show uh, program. Now, I've, I've seen your, uh, I have some um, rainy days with Facebook. Um, two years ago, I was blocked. I never understand why. Lucky me, I had a friend who gave me uh, 10 of the top down from Mark Zuckerberg email addresses, and I complained, and within one hour, I was released from prison. Now, with regard to transparency, first question, how transparent is an organization where you have a problem with being blocked and you don't know whom to address your complaint to? How does your review process goes? Because you are just telling us that, um, and I'm, I'm, I will be challenging you because uh, now we're at war and Facebook is being used by Russians to, uh, if you look at the opinion polls in Bulgaria, you would see that Bulgaria is perceived as a most pro-Russian country, but it's not because of the Bulgarians, it's because of the propaganda and they use social media. Do you know who is uh, best at using Facebook for promoting his party campaign? Fazrajdane, the most pro-Russian anti-Western company, uh, party. And, I, and I'm, yeah. I, I'm fully confident that whatever your AI algorithms or well-trained guys are doing, they're not doing a good job because that is exactly what they're doing. And that's why they're proliferating the media with their uh, total nonsense. And there's no right. check. So on, on that, so, so first of all, we do have appeal channels. As I already said, the DSA will kind of increase the visibility of these appeal channels. And I fully agree with the fact that mistakes happen and appeal channels should be there. They are there. They will be better. That's one thing. Second thing, I it's like with this kind of narrative, and I'm sorry to say so, uh, of course, we are an extremely important part of this whole kind of game but I, I wouldn't like that w people have the impression that we are the source of all evil it is no, but, yeah, but that, that, that's i'm not saying where, that you know uh, i'm using you and i'm a fan of facebook but i want to be critical just as a friend uh, and if you don't take and, this and we, then it's but, a problem but it is important also again to and we're back to the education part we're back to the to the part that um, maybe there is some literacy to be done in the societies uh, uh, and stuff like this like we're really trying to and we already discussed it work on disinformation misinformation harmful content illegal content uh, on, on our platforms if in some countries there is more appetite for some narratives rather than others no, it's not narrative. They're advertising on Facebook. That's what Vazrajan is doing. I am not able to boost any of my posts. That is the leftover from my being in prison. But I'm not complaining. This is the name. I do understand, guys, that you have a very tough job because you are just a, as a state, a quasi-state. And it, we look what states look like. And now I, I can't blame you for, for all the deficiencies and handicaps that you but have because it's if a tremendous job. If the guy job. you're talking about is advertising on Facebook, and if this is misinformation, then this is content that should land in the third party fact checker bucket. And that's, that, that, that's where I'm trying to tell you that the tools do exist, right? It's difficult for me today to talk uh, on, on specific cases, but uh, like if you look at the at scale, the tools do exist, and we're trying, then that's what we're doing today, to communicate as efficiently as possible about the existing tools, uh, which, by the way, are not perfect, Sorry. and hence the feedback that we also want to get. Okay, and, the, and on, on the community standards, uh, now I, I believe I know pretty well how the Russian propaganda works. And I tell you that these guys are professionals on using community standards against normal people. They excel at that. They are better than you even believe. And that's exactly what they're doing. They organize troll armies, which are absolutely weaponizing your community standards against the, uh, the, the larger community in Facebook. And they know every single letter, every single angle which they can use in order to... And, uh, okay, 
I know that it's back to, back to our discussion. So should we be more transparent in our community standards? In terms of transparency, uh, uh, they are end. Uh, if you ask Bulgarians using Facebook, 95% of them would tell you that, oh, I, I can't see how I could appeal say, first, and then when I can appeal after I, I had been blocked. Uh, it is, well, transparency for me is ease of access, okay? If you look at the Facebook page, finding the button review and appeal is not the first thing that you would easily identify and find. I mean, it's, uh, it's just like any commodity in this market. If you can't appeal the product instantly, on spot, then you have a problem. I, I do believe that you want to be more transparent. But I also do believe that, uh, with, for example, your relations with st state uh, authorities, or st I, I, I imagine you also have some sort of relationship with secret services. No. You don't? I personally don't, yeah. You don't we do know. have, if on that, very clearly, okay, we do have specific imagine, teams that are in charge with uh, relations with law enforcement. Okay, fine. Okay. But just imagine a law enforcement uh, um, institution in a semi-autocratic country or with a country that is not particularly excelling until recently hasn't been excelling in applying dem democratic standards. I shall not continue, but I just and tell no, no, you that, like, uh, that uh, yeah. I, I know of instances where our law enforcement uh, um, organizations have been used against people in, in social media, using social media. On this specific case, as I already mentioned, we do have our human rights team that really reviews it also against that to avoid these kind of things. But I mean, we could spend the whole day on specific cases. Yeah. Uh, for Bulgaria and Bulgarian. Well, yeah, we do have two human rights team that also Congrats. Bring Bulgarian cases. Kudos. Yeah, absolutely. Um, probably last two questions, quick one, because we need to. Uh, yeah, okay, three uh, really quick, really quick. well synthesized questions, please, um, to every one of the panelists, probably. Thank you. Just a message to Roski. My name is Aneta Stefanova. I work on Peter's team at the embassy. <laughs> Hi, Peter. Uh, <laughs> It uh, must be a very, could be a very simple answer. Maybe I just don't understand the, the procedures at Facebook. When you're talking about fact-checking, working with AFP on this, yeah. um, I know how this works. I know who works on this. Is there a reason why if you identify a story as fake news, you just put out a warning and not take it down completely? Yeah, while it is a decision that's been taken by us on purpose uh, because we do believe that uh, again, true, not true, it remains like something that is to be defined. And we do believe that if we remove it completely, well, the story would, will go elsewhere anyway. So we do prefer to uh, downgrade it like up to 80% and allow our users to see it less rather than completely remove it. That being said, this is a, like, you know, it's a fair question and um, something on which I understand there can be debate here. Because obviously contrast of actually taking down people's profiles um, you know it, it's not fair uh, in my well, mind it's not Whereas fair if, if you have a profile a has been taken down it's been taken down because it's been misleading several times our community standards that is the reason why it's being taken down for uh, fake news and content that has been assessed as fake news by our fact checkers indeed the policy today is to downgrade it in the in the news feed Maybe something to reconsider in the future, especially given how serious AFP are in actually establishing the facts and the truth and just continuing the spread of fake news, actually. Um, it's probably not fair to societies around the world. But thank you very much for the explanation. Thank you. Um, yeah. Please introduce yourself. <laughs> Hello, I'm Rusina Petrova from the Bulgarian National Radio and also a part of the fact-checking team. My question is, um, can the traditional media like uh, Bulgarian National Radio help Meta uh, fight uh, against fake news? We've been talking about at-scale campaigns, and I think that 
such a media like the one you represent may be to be discussed of course but may be precisely a good ally in making really huge campaigns not only um, like on meta but also in other media campaigns uh, to raise awareness of the users. So yeah, I think that there is room for cooperation here, absolutely. Yeah. I'll add that I think that we've been very impressed at the embassy with uh, the sort of grassroots uh, fact-checking initiatives that have sprung up uh, in, in since the uh, full-scale unprovoked Russian invasion of Ukraine especially, uh, but even before uh, here in Bulgaria. And I think that there's a lot of great work being done in that space. And the embassy has had a lot of um, grant opportunities and a lot of engagements uh, on disinformation and fact-checking in particular. And we, we want to continue to ramp up our, our presence and our work with local partners like BNR to, to do more uh, because I think that's where the real the needle can be moved in a real way, is with credible local voices uh, doing that, that good work. Thank you for adding that, because uh, the role of the American Embassy is important for organizational working in, in education, including we do, in media. We do our because. humble best. <laughs> yeah, and Ivail, probably you're the one last. Ivail was passed from UNICEF Bulgaria. And hi to, to all the panelists. Uh, indeed, I'm uh, representing the Bulgarian office of UNICEF. Uh, and I have a particular question. I'm not going to talk about, uh, you know, elections and war because most of the other uh, members of the audience did already. But I want to mention the angle of uh, um, public health when it comes to the COVID pandemic. And kudos, by the way, to Meta, who was very proactive in partnership with UNICEF, with WHO, with the big, uh, I would say, uh, UN agencies and other stakeholders that were promoting scientific factual information. Uh, I've been personally involved in many campaigns throughout the last three years, and I know Meta was supporting uh, that factual, scientific-based information. And yet, something went wrong. I mean, we had all the resources in place, all the fact checkers, all the science behind the vaccines, uh, and we see in reality that for countries like Bulgaria, the processes were very politicized, very, um, I mean, conspiracy theories, rumors all together. And I'm saying it from purely practitioner's point of view that we are seeing hesitancy so high that it's already affecting uh, the vaccine coverage, for example, on other diseases like measles, polio, that we thought are already eradicated or close to eradication. And this is uh, definitely due to a large scale uh, disinformation and misinformation organized campaigns that even Meta could not counter, I would say, because uh, I don't know, they were super organized, the, the uh, conspiracy theories and uh, non-scientific uh, rumors. And WHO, for example, has proven with, with reports and analyses that disinformation in the real life actually uh, takes lives and harms the well-being of people. So my question would be, uh, how do you assess probably your involvement in the, in the whole pandemic uh, content moderation aspect, if there was a content moderation aspect, particularly to the COVID-19 uh, crisis. Uh, I don't want to talk about it in past tense because the yeah. pandemic is not over. And I'm, I'm sure, for, and I'm, I can testify from my personal experience that Meta was doing a lot to really promote scientific information and fact-based uh, information. And yet, for example, in Bulgaria, we never passed the 30% threshold of vaccinated people and we are going to see a long-term devastating consequences on the health of people when it comes to yeah, disinformation. Um, yeah, well, thank I, you. I guess, thank you very much for this question. Uh, so, first of all, I, I really think that we did and tried to do our, our bit on COVID. What is extremely important, and also back to the former question, misinformation that can drive to uh, physical harm to our users, which is basically COVID misinformation, is 
the only misinformation that we do assess as being against our community standards and hence we remove. It's not something that we send to our uh, third party fact checker uh, and that we ask them to review and then we maybe downgrade or not. Misinformation that has, uh, uh, um, uh, that can be harmful to the users uh, is something that, that is removed and that we did remove. Um, that is one thing. On the other hand, as you said, it was super important for us also to promote VHO content, uh, UNICEF content. I mean, only a few weeks after the pandemic, we have created this information center that was on top of every news feed during months, months. So we've done our bit. Did we do enough? I don't know, maybe not. Uh, are we like the main p player to blame about how many people are vaccinated or not? Not sure, really not sure. Um, we have to wrap up, um, and if you allow me to, I would try to extract some key phrases from our conversation. First of all, this is only the beginning, I believe, of our conversations. Of course. But uh, we'll, we all agree on these key phrases. Transparency, multi-stakeholder cooperation, partnership with organization in civic society, tr um, uh, education, with, with a huge exclamation point, uh, education, debunking, the really important work uh, fact-checking organization, but also because we finish with that pre-banking, because this is probably the next big thing in content moderation. Uh, thank you all for <laughs> your participation and thank you uh, to all the members of the audience for being active, engaged.